I'm Jessie, I'm from Provenance. Provenance is a technology company based in London. Um, we're set up to help us all better understand our material world. Where do our products come from? Who made them? From what materials? And how might we give them a bright future after our use for them is done? So we work with businesses, small and large, um, to help champion the good, strengthen the good, rather than um, highlight the bad. Um, and we work on supply chain transparency, supply chain and life cycle transparency for products. So my talk today is really about supply chain transparency, the journey I've been on over the past two years, um, going from a project into a company and learning an awful lot about how supply chain transparency is currently happening um, in the world today, but also the huge downfalls of using open data for supply chain transparency and how there is a new type of data infrastructure called a blockchain, which is gonna help us create a new era for open data, one that's not only open, but trusted. So a bit of preamble, Provenance was started as a project um, while I was doing a PhD in computer science, and I was shopping online, and I was kind of appalled that I'm on the internet, the fingertips, a data should be at my fingertips, yet I can only sort products by price and brand and color, it seemed a bit moronic. I wanted to know where things were created, I wanted to know if they were tested on animals, and both of those kinds of information just existed as flimsy JPEGs inside a product uh, page on the internet. And I thought there should be something more robust. So there is a lot more to products than meet the eye. I think we all know that each product goes through a complex journey, usually global, before it uh, meets us and, um, and our life, and a complex journey after we're done with it as well. And at the moment, many brands are claiming that that journey, or part of that journey at least, is ethical, sustainable. It seems like everything from shoes to crisps are handcrafted. So what do we trust? With the horse meat scandal, the Bangladesh garment factory collapse, with exist huge amounts of um, increasing regulation that warrants compliance, with the billions of pounds lost to counterfeit goods online every day, I think trusted information about where our products come from is needed more than ever. So this is what we embarked on with Provenance. We decided to make a framework for businesses to, to be more open about their product supply chains. However, in order for that data to be trusted, that data needed a source, which meant you needed to reveal exactly who the manufacturer was that is claiming to be organic. However, this is hugely problematic in supply chains because Supply chains are seen as a competitive advantage. I do not want to reveal all my factories. That's a closely guarded secret. Or the case with most supply chains is it, that supply chain is a secret from the brand. In fact, they have no idea what's going on further up the chain. Where's that cotton come from? No clue. So there presents a bit of a problem to making supply chains transparent and certainly that data trusted. So we embarked on how we might solve that problem. Possibly, yes, we did. We tried to look at how we could make supply chains more transparent. And looking at existing systems, we see that people try to put a new data layer between all the different data silos along supply chains. They act as a trusted third party to broker that data about supply chains in order to inform us, the consumers. And this is how information has been made transparent along supply chains over the past uh, digital years we've seen. And indeed, this was the only way to make data transparent until recently. However, having one trusted organization broker all the data along a whole supply chain is completely flawed. Because firstly, this company has to be all powerful and all trustworthy. There must be no corruption of that system administrator, otherwise you've ruined a whole company's business. There's no incentives for smaller companies to join that kind of transparency framework. Automatically, they'll be cut out, and not to mention the millions of middlemen. Surely they're going to be squeezed. And if that data's hacked, there you go. You've lost all of your supply chain information in one fell swoop. Luckily, in 2008, Satoshi Nakamoto wrote a paper about a cryptocurrency called Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin is digital money, but it's not just digital money. What Bitcoin did for the first time is allowed two people to transact some data, some, some money, um, over the internet, but without the need for a trusted third party. There is no bank being an intermediary in your transaction on the Bitcoin network. In fact, the data system itself is the, is the broker of the trust. So let's go into that in a little more depth. 
So currently we have the system on the left where all of our data sits in servers and we've had lots of discussion today about making that data open as well we should. And the best method is create an API, make it a bit more interoperable. But they're still fundamentally all just separate silos. And if you want to make that data open, you might have to just create another silo and take some data out of the other silos and then make that open, which, of course, comes with all the problems of uh, security that I mentioned before. However, with a blockchain, we gain this whole new paradigm for how data can be uh, logged, exposed, discovered. It sits in a shared, secure, auditable data layer where most of the data remains pseudo-anonymous and transactions of data can be operated without a centralized third party. So this is what we're doing for supply chains. We're allowing suppliers in the field to use their mobile phones to add data securely to a blockchain. This data can then, say a certification data, can then be carried along the chain through the manufacturer, through the retailer, and finally to you, the end consumer, allowing you to see the full chain of custody without the need to see exactly where each stage of the data come from, but to be able to trust that data, just as I trust you've given me a Bitcoin. <laughs> and this is all logged in a database owned by nobody, or everybody, depends on how you see it. It's not owned by provenance, it's simply uh, a, a commons to allow us all to share this information securely whilst protecting our identity. So this is what we've been building and deploying into the field. Many people say the blockchain is like the state of the internet was in the 90s, which I find pretty exciting. Um, allowing, uh, us allowing information to cascade along a chain very securely and be accessed from a product. For the first time, this has now been possible on a data commons without uh, the need for a centralized authority. Um, yeah, so you can follow our progress on provenance. And if, you, if any of you are more interested in blockchains and this new paradigm for data, come say hi. Thank you.